Okay, this video is going to take a look at uh, price elasticity of supply. So it's unit 2.6 now, and PES, price elasticity of supply, measures the responsiveness of supply to a change in price. Okay, these definitions that you get in economics, it's really important that you just make sure that you've got a very accurate sort of textbook definition uh, of uh, of the words that you're, you know you might be asked a two mark question on. So responsiveness of supply to a change in price. So we're looking at it from the producer's point of view. So essentially, if the price changes, we, like we know that firms will want to supply more. It's a higher price, chance of making more profit. But the how much more can they actually supply? How easy is it for them to get product out onto the shelves? To us as consumers, uh, once the price goes up, they want to supply more. If the price goes down, supply less. Um, the equation, again, follows much the same sort of format as the other two. Percentage change in supply divided by the percentage change in price. So, again, you might be given that already as just percentage changes, relatively straightforward, uh, just to input them into the equation. Or you might be given some data like here, where you're asked to actually do the calculations yourself. So, you know, if the price increases from 10 to 20, Supply goes up from 50 to 60, so percentage change in supply. <clears throat> I just talked through it here. Change in supply is 10 divided by the original, which is 50, multiplied by 100. So you've got a 20% change in supply. And as a result of a increase in price from 10 to 20, it's a 100% increase in price. So 20% divided by 100% will give you 0.2 unresponsive inelastic supply supply goes up it doesn't go up very much it's not particularly responsive to the price change so again you'll get different values of e of elasticity supply uh, that they will uh, it'll always be a positive number because it's a positive relationship between the two um, but it can be inelastic so it'd be between zero and one or greater than one uh, where the product is a much more elastic version um, so in your subject guide, you've got five determinants of PES, and again, you need to uh, be able to understand what impacts these determinants are going to have on making the product either elastic or inelastic. We saw time with as a determinant of demand. It's a similar thing here, you know, that over time, products tend to become more elastic in supply because firms are able to increase production, step up production, employ factors of production that they might need. They can't do that immediately, the price changes, but they can do it over time. So the rest of these are really all about the ability of firms to change their production and mobility. How easy is it for them to get factors of production? Do they have spare capacity? Um, can they store the products? Um, <clears throat> so it's available if the price does change and to what extent the costs increase and change if they do increase their outputs. Okay, so each of those in turn. And then as we do with demand, you know, you need to be familiar with the various shapes of the supply curve. It, it, this one's a little bit different in that, you know, we saw a sort of relatively elastic and inelastic demand curves. It's a bit more difficult to talk about that with supply. Um, so essentially you, you need to remember a couple of things. One is that any supply curve that goes through the origin, it doesn't matter what it looks like, either one of these, if it goes through the origin, it has a PES equal to one. Okay? And then any supply curve that is, looks like, or does go through the vertical axis, um, that will be an elastic supply curve, have a value of greater than one. And any supply curve, a bit, bit straighter line than that one, but it looks like it's going to go through the horizontal axis that's an inelastic supply curve so that will have a PES value of between zero and one okay so it's really to be able to draw these is in relation to where the supply curve is going to meet the various different axes okay you can have a perfectly inelastic one which again will be vertical or a perfectly elastic one which will be uh, a horizontal line for those doing higher level, it's further addition, as we saw with the other elasticities. So 
Um, this one is looking at the PES in relation to primary and secondary type products. Um, what you need to understand is why primary products, agricultural goods, if you like, uh, tend to have a lower value of PES. They're unresponsive, they're inelastic in supply compared to relative to manufacturing goods. And that largely stems um, from the fact that agricultural or primary goods take time uh, to uh, produce. So if the price of wheat goes up, it's not possible to increase the supply of wheat relatively quickly. It takes time for farmers to adjust to that and you know, the growing season. That's true with livestock as well. It's also true to a certain extent with primary goods like oil. You know, we've seen that in recent months uh, with the conflict in Ukraine, you know, putting pressure on oil supplies around the world. It's not easy for the other major oil producers to step up production immediately. Like it's going to take time for that oil to come online and uh, for the supply to increase.